everyone and welcome back to this week's video where today I am going to talk to you guys about three important things that happened in July and they all have to deal with Disney of course and there is also another reason why I'm posting this today my family and I are annual pass holders and today marks our 12 year anniversary as Disneyland annual pass holders we have had our annual passes for 12 years straight that is so crazy. But we are also so blessed and grateful that we have been able to do this for so long. Disney is our home and it's just somewhere that makes us happy and always creates endless memories for us. July has been a very busy month for Disney. It was D23, Descendants 2 premiered, and Raven came back with a new spin-off of That's a Raven called Raven's Home. There is going to be a lot to talk about in this video, so let's get started. I'm gonna start with talking about the last day of D23, which was also the day before Disneyland's birthday. Anyways, the night before, I only got like two hours of sleep, and my family and I woke up at 4 a.m. to get there bright and early. So we got to the convention center at like 6 a.m., but the doors didn't open till 9. Adrian. Hello. Good night. But we got there early because we wanted to get in line to get stage passes for the Hercules panel. We got through the doors and there was already a couple of people in line. But then a few moments later, we found out that they weren't letting any more people in until 9 a.m. because the lines were already full. Wait, I totally realized that I forgot to explain this, but if you guys don't know what D23 is, it's basically a Disney convention. Just like how Comic Con has their own little thing, this is a convention just based off of Disney. Everything Disney you love. It's every Disney fan's dream. So back to my story. They stopped letting people in once the lines got filled up, but once it hit nine o'clock, the madness begun. Luckily, I downloaded the D23 app to help us organize our schedule. I'm gonna tell you why this app is so useful. It is very helpful when it comes to knowing the times and locations of where everything is gonna take place. There are meet and greets, panels, artist signings, and a bunch of other activities. It makes you feel a little bit overwhelmed, but at the same time, really excited. The next time you decide I'm going to D23, I totally recommend you download this app. Right now, it offers Obviously doesn't have anything because D23 is over for this year but in 2019 it will make its return so I totally recommend you downloading this app if you decide to go to D23 in the near future this is so sad there's like nothing on here and it used to be like filled with panels and signings and all that good stuff now let's talk about panels we kicked off the day at the Lion King panel first thing in the morning and it was so amazing. My entire family enjoyed it. They brought out the cast and crew that worked on this movie such as the director, producer, the animators, and some of the voice actors. It was really interesting to hear about the process of making this movie and how they thought it wasn't going to be that much of a success. but. Obviously, it did turn out to be a big success. We also went to the Hercules panel where they had both of the directors, voice actors, and the animators talk about their experience with working on this movie. In the Lion King panel, they ended it with a live performance of The Circle of Life sung by Carmen Twilly. I really hope I'm saying that right. And in the Hercules panel, they ended it with a live performance sung by Susan Egan where she sang I Won't Say. And we ended the day at the Imagineering panel hosted by John Stamos along with some longtime Disney Imagineers. My parents were so happy that they got to see John Stamos and Whoopi Gold in one day. Okay, now let's talk about stage passes and store passes. These are really important things to get when attending D23. They don't cost any money. It basically works like a fast pass when you go to Disneyland and California Adventure. The first thing we did when entering the convention center was getting stage passes for the Hercules panel. We didn't know how packed or crowded it was going to be, so we wanted to make sure that they could guarantee us a seat in the panel. That's why we got the stage passes. Right after that, we got store passes to the store of our choice. There were some like the Disney Dream Store, Mickey's of Glendale, and the Disney Store. But these just aren't 
your ordinary store. They sell exclusive merchandise. And I wanted to make sure that I got something that could remind me of D23. So we chose to go to the Disney Dream Store where I got this shirt that says D23 Expo 2017 on it. And what I also really love about this shirt is that on the back it says Disney Fanatic. And what also made me really happy is that they let me use my Disneyland annual pass for that discount. I think it's time for a little outfit change right now. Hey, voiceover version of me editing this right now. Did this part look legit? Eh, yeah, I, guess. I guess. I'll take it. Now let's talk about cosplays. There were so many cosplays at this expo, but I think the one that I saw the most was Rapunzel. There was like a million Rapunzels at this place. Okay, but let's pause for a sec. The ones that were dressed like Spider-Man were super into it that day. One of them was literally rolling around in the middle of the aisle of all these people walking. Roll the clip. cosplays that I saw that day were these two girls that were dressed up like the cheerleader version of Kim Possible and Shigo. I am like a super huge fan of Kim Possible and seeing that was so amazing. I didn't necessarily cosplay at this expo but I did wear my Buzz Lightyear t-shirt and hold up my green alien vans. They glow in the dark and they've got Woody and Buzz right on them. So I was repping Toy Story that day. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Okay. I was gonna wear my green alien sweatshirt, but I chose to wear the Buzz Lightyear one because it was super hot and I wasn't down to wear a long sleeve at the expo. Now we're gonna talk about the booths or stands and other activities that they had there. We stopped by a few of them in between panels. We went to the Disney Animation and Pixar area and we also got to see a huge model of Star Wars Land that's coming in 2019. We also saw a drawing demo by a Disney artist, helped create kits for the Boys and Girls Club, saw some pancake art, and we watched a parade with Grand Marshals Mandy Moore and Zachary Levi, who are the voices of Rapunzel and Flynn Rider, or Eugene Fitzherbert, from Tangled. And if you know me, I love Tangled, so this was so cool to see in person. So overall, we did a lot at D23 and had a lot of fun. I didn't get to film everything because I kind of wanted to enjoy the experience in person, but here are some clips of what we experienced there. Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to this week's video where today we are here at D23 and I am here today with my family and we are super excited to see what's going to happen. We are already waiting in line for the stage pass, so let's get started. So now comes the part of the video where I'm going to give a little bit of criticism and talk about what I think needs a little bit of improvement at D23. I'm not trying to be harsh or anything, but this is just my honest opinion of how they can better the experience there. It's already great as it is, but these are what I think needs improvement. Being clear when it comes to schedule changes and having better communication when it comes to those changes. There was this DuckTales money pit where you got to jump into and there was this really cool camera that would take like a picture or a boomerang from like 180 degrees. When we showed up, it was like 
2 p.m. One of the cast members told us that the line was closed and they weren't letting any more people in, but it was only two. And the expo stops at 7 p.m. And I would constantly check the app to make sure that we were going to panels and booths at the right time. And there was nowhere on the app that told me a time that the place would shut down. If we would have known that, then we would have showed up earlier to jump in the money pit. But stopping at five hours before D23 is over, just didn't really make sense to me. Maybe it was because there was already a long line of people and they wanted to make sure that they got them all in before seven, but two is like way too early. I just didn't understand. A bunch of other people showed up with us too, confused on why they were closing at two. So I think it would have been helpful if the app told us that they were gonna stop letting people in at two. Another situation that we experienced at D23 were changes when it comes to the artist signings. When looking at the app, I saw that there were some instances in which you needed to show up to get a wristband to go to a meetup. Like for the Tangle the Series meetup, you needed to go to get a wristband at a certain time and then show up later to meet the cast. So they were having an artist signing which included Eric Goldberg. And if you don't know who Eric Goldberg is, he is a really talented animator who works for Disney for quite a while. He animated the genie and Minnie Maui, a bunch of other characters. So for me being an animator, I really wanted to meet him and get some advice. And I even drew him something in my sketchbook that I was hoping to get signed. But when we showed up to get in line for the signing, one of the cast members told me that I needed a ticket in order to get in the line. And we were a bit confused because nowhere on the app did it say that you needed to get a ticket or a wristband in order to get into the line. So my family and I went to guest relations to ask them about this and what they basically told us was that for the safety of the men doing the signing, they just decided to add tickets to it, but they didn't announce it or anything. It was basically you had to be there at the moment to get the tickets and then get in line. It was nowhere listed on the app, just like the Tangled Meetup. For the Tangled Meetup, it was listed on the app that you were required to have a wristband when attending, but for the artist signing, it was nowhere on the app saying that you needed a ticket or a wristband to get in line. But basically, plans changed because of the amount of people attending this signing and for the safety of the men. I thought that it would have been more helpful if they would have let us know that they were making these changes ahead of time. It's just, how could we have known, you know? You'd have to be there right at the moment in order to find out. So I didn't get to meet Eric Goldberg and I didn't get my artwork signed, which I was kind of bummed, but I tried to not let that ruin the rest of D23 for my family and I. Maybe one day there'll be another opportunity in which I can have him sign this but I don't know when that day will come. It was just such a perfect opportunity right there and I felt that it was just taken away from us. Even my mom overheard one of the cast members telling a person that they wish that there was a little bit of better communication when it comes to changes. So overall, I think that better communication when it comes to schedule changes would be better when attending this expo. All right, so enough of that. Now let's talk about free stuff. At random times in the day and depending on where we were, they handed out some free stuff. So let's see what we've got. Well, first off, this is just a general thing that we got in the mail before attending the expo, but this is our ticket and lanyard, which says my name on it. And then they also had these D23 Expo recyclable bags of pretty nice, pretty nice. My family and I picked up a couple of those. And when we were helping create kits for Disney volunteers for the Boys and Girls Club, we were handed these Be Inspired Disney recyclable bags, put them off, put them off, along with this bookmark and recipe book, and this sticker that says Honorary Disney Volunteer on it. And when we were walking around the Disney animation area, we were handed these pins of Olaf and Vanellope and, oh, my DuckTales poster. Oh, DuckTales, ooh. We also got this DuckTales comic series poster with Tangled on the back. And this is kind of a no-brainer of what you get for free when coming, but it's a map with all the times and locations of where everything's gonna take place. All right, Tara. 
And lastly, while I was walking, one of the people working there just came up to me and said, Hey, you want free Descendants trading cards? And I was like, so I got two trading cards of Jay and Evie from Descendants, which leads to our next topic of discussion, Descendants 2. I watched the first one when it came out on Disney Channel a few years ago, and yes, I am 21 and still watch Disney Channel, okay? I don't think I'm the only one, right? Or I may be the only one. Anyways, the sequel came out in July and I honestly loved it just like the first one. I think it's just because it's kind of like High School Musical but with a twist. But it's also directed and choreographed by Kenny Ortega which you'll know it's gonna come out great if he's involved in the movie. I just like the concept of it all and the storyline. My favorite songs from both and the first one I really liked, Rot Into the Core, Dimension, If Only, and Set It Off. And the second one I really liked, What's My Name, It's Going Down. Let's go, make your move, piece of water, it's up to you. Give them up and do it now, if you go, it's going down. You and me, and chilling like a villain. That song gave me Michael Jackson vibes. That song's been stuck in my head since it came out. I love the dance moves and the whole vibe of it. I just really wish I could dance like that. But if I did, I would probably look like Ben in that number. I'm low-key trying to get Adrian to learn the moves to chill in like a villain with me, but I don't know if it's gonna happen. Your time is running out. You should really watch your mouth. Descendants is just a really cool movie to watch because you get to see the children of villains, princes, and princesses all in one movie and it's really cool to see how they interact with each other and how the story grows from that. Like do you ever get the feeling when you watch a really good movie and you just wish that you could be a part of it? I'm hungry. Do you ever get the feeling when you watch a really good movie that you just wish you could be a part of it? That's me right now. So Disney, if you're making a Descendants 3, hit me up. It's always been one of my dreams to be on Disney Channel doing the wand ID saying, Hi, I'm Valeria and you're watching Disney Channel. I think that's like every kid's dream. But wait. Spoiler alert. If you don't want the end of this movie spoiled for you, then just skip a few seconds into the video. There is a pretty good feeling that there's gonna be a Descendants 3. Just like how Mal did it in the end of the first movie, Uma comes up from the water and says, you didn't think this was the end of the story, did you? Which is basically hinting that there is going to be a third movie. I don't know what child of a hero or a villain I would be though, like that's pretty weird to think. <gasps> what if I was Rapunzel's daughter? Comment down below what child of a villain, prince, or princess you would want to be, because I want to know. Last but not least, can we please talk about Raven's Home? I was 8 years old watching That's So Raven, and now I'm 21 watching Raven's Home. That is crazy. I watched it on Saturday morning, just like I did when I was 8 years old, and it's Ugh, the nostalgia was real. It's been 14 years and Raven still got it. She still has that spark and acting ability just to make anyone laugh. For those of you who don't know what Raven's Home is, it's a spin-off of the series That's So Raven that came out in like the early 2000s. And now Raven and Chelsea have kids and are raising them in the same house. If you haven't watched That's So Raven, then I highly suggest you watch it before watching Raven's Home. It looks like we have reached the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe by hitting that button down below. Let me know what you guys think of Descendants 2 and Raven's Home and if you ever plan on attending D23 or if you did in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.